What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Elden Ring walkthrough. Uh, starting off in Roundtable Hold, as usual. Um, in the last episode, we got a, a bell bearing that we can give to the uh, merchant in here. That I did not do in the last episode, so I'm going to do it right now. So we can offer the bell bearing that we got from killing the uh, boss in the crystal tunnel that we went to in the last episode. So we can offer this, Smithing Miners Bell Bearing 1. And what that does is it increases their, um, the merchant's, um, uh, shop. It increases the, uh, number of items that they offer. So we see here, we have Smithing Stone 1 and Smithing Stone 2 available for purchase. So quite nice. Um, definitely want to get those bell bearings throughout the game because they will help you out enormously, especially if you're trying to upgrade a lot of weapons. Um, not all of them give Smithing Stone. Some of them, uh, offer, uh, or, or add add additional different types of items to the uh, Maiden's shop. But in this case, it was Smithing Stones. And as you get later and later into the game, um, obviously you'll be able to add more and more different types of items to the shop. So where we're going to start is right here at the uh, Liurnia Highway North. We're going to take on a large swath of this kind of eastern area uh, to the lake. So warp over here. And uh, we have uh, lots to do, guys. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good fun. Uh, so here we are. I'm just gonna check the time of day real quick. We're early day. That's perfect. So for starters, we're gonna go like kind of through these woods. And then I think there is a uh, starlight fragment over here. And then um, from there, there's another one of those mariner mini bosses that we're going to get a death root from. So definitely going to do that. Remember those death roots are the uh, items that you give to the uh, the beast all the way over in Eastern Caleb at the K Kalid at the uh, bestial sanctum. And he gives you he trades you items for uh, those death roots. This is our first waypoint. There's really nothing here per se. Uh, there is this crab. This crab is not worth fighting in my opinion. He spits out like a, it, it, he spits out a, a mist that causes death blight. And death blight is a status effect in this game that causes literally instant death. It doesn't matter how high your HP is. If you get hit with death blight, you're dead right away. Um, so, there are some enemies later on in the game that will inflict that on us as well. Uh, but if you have the chance to avoid it, I say you might as well avoid it. It's not fun. So there's our Mariner. There's some stuff on this here, uh, ruin. And again, like the others, this one's not all that tough. You see that the beast eye quivers. Um, we got the beast eye from uh, from the uh, I forget. I think his name's Garonk at the Bestial Sanctum, and it quivers every time that we're near a uh, death root. So I picked up some uh, smithing stones. I'm gonna do a dismounted heavy right here, and really I'm just gonna spam my special to be quite honest. Um, I'm gonna ignore the summons that she brought into the fight. I could summon here too, but you know, the, the, what they, what the summons, what my summons would do is they would take away the aggro off of, off of the Mariner's summons. You want to be away from this attack. This is probably her, her his or her heaviest attack. Um, and you can see, killed most of, most of the summons from doing that. Friendly fire, okay. Big AOE attack right there. Best to just stay away. All right, so I'm out. I'm out of FP, so I'm gonna restore my flask here. And he keeps teleporting all over the place. Just gotta keep up. All the way up there now. Once the boss is dead, then um, all the summons go away too. We're almost done here. All right. The victory is ours. Good stuff. 
Um, so got the death root and got this skeletal bandit ashes. So not a bad haul. All we're going to do now is head north to this spot right here. When we see off to the side here, that is a large building that we're actually going to go to in just a second. But there's much more to it than we're going to be able to do at this point in time. There's a knight here that drops some loot. But what we're going to do is we're going to get the side of grace just past it before we fight him. Because he is tough. So that way, uh, if we die, we just respawn right here instead of all the way back where we were before. I'm going to go on and rest. See if I can level up. Just shy. I'm actually going to uh, get some runes here to, uh, to force a level up. Five. Hopefully should be enough. I'm not very precise with my calculations. But I just kind of eyeball it. There we go. That was plenty. Uh, let's see. Strength, vigor, blah, blah, blah. I'll take my strength up to 22. And then we'll probably take vigor up to 20, or endurance, rather, up to 25. And then, um, we'll focus a lot on HP after that to get to that, the first soft cap for HP, which is level 40. Uh, there's the knight down there. Um, we also got the resurrection painting. So remember these things, they, they, uh, spawn a ghost somewhere in the world who was painting this picture. Once you find that, you get a pretty decent item. Um, we haven't been to this spot yet, so, uh, we'll, we'll get to this later. All right, gonna ride on over to this guy. I'm gonna do a dismounted heavy attack on him to get things started. You see how much HP he has, but... You can get a good good combo on him and already took off a third of his health. Once he does a stab, that's a good opportunity to do your, your Bloodhound's finesse. Get a jump attack and he's almost dead. So stay on the offensive. You should be good. He does have a lot of HP. He drops he drops the Dragon Cult Prayer Book. Um, I should have did this before coming down here, but up here there is a uh, smithing stone that I didn't pick up yet. I should have done that before fighting the knight, but oh well. All right, smithing stone four. So where we're headed now is the best kept secret of the lands between. Oft overlooked. We're going to Jarberg. And the only way to get there is uh, very carefully. <laughs> um, if you look over the edge, there's a Cerulean Scarab. Don't need it. Um, if you look over the edge, there's going to be little tombstones you can drop down on. And you have to drop very carefully. There's the first one. This first one just inch over the edge. I find this is best to do on horseback. And these first few, you can just kind of run off. You know, get down to the next one. Just run off. And the, there are some lower ones we're going to have to jump down to. Um, you don't want to overshoot your mark. That's just a single jump. This one, you can run off. Run off. And then we'll land on top of this roof here. Get this item. Smithing stone three. And there's some good uh, vegetation in this area that you can pick up for crafting. Got some Arteria leaves. Um, so we got a side of grace over here. Make sure you... These are friendly, friendly pots, so don't hit anything. Be nice. So we got our Jarberg side of grace. Down here is a uh, cemetery.
get us some runes here. And I think that's all of them. Yep, okay. So there's an NPC here. Um, this NPC was actually added after the patch 1.03. So for those of you who bought and played the game right when it came out, you didn't have this NPC. Hello, Cos. What are you doing here? I didn't think anyone knew about this place. Except us jars. Ah. Are you going to be the new potentate? Gosh. Truly. That's wonderful news. It's not easy being potentate, though. I know. Show me your hands. It's just a little test, cuz. To see if you've got the right stuff. Hmm. Your skin isn't so smooth, is it? You need slick, slidey hands to be potentate, you know? I'm sorry, cuz. But I don't think you've got what it takes. What a shame. Okay, so this particular NPC... Uh, you actually have to rest to, to advance the dialogue. And then come back. And then rest and then come back. A little bit tedious, but... Gotta do what you gotta do. Oh! Hello again, cuz. I'm happy you came back. I have good tidings for you, cuz. Have you noticed the rare flowers growing in this village? I asked the villagers if you could pick some of them, and they said you'd be very welcome. Go on, cuz. You really should pick some of our flowers. Who knows? They might be of some use. Go on. Who knows? Okay, so rest again. And, and this side quest is not for anything super important. No no endings, no trophies, or anything related. This is just a ho-hum side quest. Cos, have you met Uncle Alexander? He used to live here with us, but then he left to be a champion. I asked to go with him, but he said, The path of champions must be trod alone. So heroic, right? I miss him, though. If you see him, you should ask him to teach you how to fight, cuz. He's big and tough and strong. So you'd think that this would have something to do with Alexander's quest. This actually has... It's, it's completely independent of Alexander's quest. There's no interdependencies here. Uncle Alexander said he won't be back again. My home is of the past. And the past, as they say, is a different country. I suppose that's part of being a warrior, isn't it? So, please don't tell anyone, cuz. But I'm actually a warrior jar as well. One day, I'll be just like Uncle Alexander. And I'll have to leave the village to become a champion. Uncle Alexander won't... My home is off... I suppose that's... Okay, um, I think there's one more set of dialogue here. It's kind of annoying that they made it to where you have to keep doing this to advance, but... Ah, do you know what a poacher is, cuz? They hunt us, smash us, and then take us away. This village is kept secret, so I think we're safe here. But you should be careful if you ever meet one of them, cuz. I hope Uncle Alexander beats them all up first. Those awful poachers. Okay, I'm just gonna check one last time. I think the poachers is the last thing that he talks about for now. But his quest is actually interlinked with Dialos's quest. So Dialos is the guy, he was originally in Round Table Hold. And then he found his servant, I think it was, at uh, Liernia. She was dead. He was mad. So he went to Volcano Manor. His quest is actually linked Those with this quest. Yep. Okay. 
Awful poachers. Okay, cool, cool. All right, up here there is item on the roof. Ritual pot. And all of these pots down here are friendly, so be nice. I'm not killing any of the living ones. I just so happen to be breaking some of the ones that are uh, not moving. Okay, and then there's uh, a couple more. Swing by and get this one. Then there's that one on top of the jar over there. Got another crack pot. Then the one on top here. Oh, and then there's the one by the... Uh, tombstone over here. Okay, that's all we can get here. So we're going to warp right back here to the artist's shack. Or, oh, let me think. Actually, we're going to warp here to the eastern Lyrnia Lake shore. Something I want to do first. Um, so... Where we're headed now is here. I pointed it out earlier. It's a big old building. And look at that scene. That's pretty freaking sweet. They got like the moon right up next to the Erd tree. That's pretty amazing. Like that is incredible. That's just such an artistic like... Ugh. I mean this game may not be like the most graphically impressive performance wise. But the art style is top notch. The creativity is top notch. Uh, let's see. So we got a scarab here for a Smith Somber three. Like that is first rate. Um, so here we are, the Carrion Study Hall, and we're not going to be here for long. Not for long at all. Um, so, you go here to the uh, pedestal. Something fits on it. We don't have it yet. And we're not going to get it for quite, quite a while. Um, I will say. However, there is still stuff for us to do here. There, I, I, I'm going to point out, okay, this area right now is totally optional. And there is... A particular enemy that is just... Yeah, he's... He's quite annoying. He's a magic spammer. And and not only does he spam magic, but he teleports. And uh, he's, he's just overall very annoying. There is a talisman in here, though. And if you kill him, you get a spell. He is very tough to kill. What I reckon... He's going to... You know, there's a bunch of, like, ghosts that get summoned... Run past all the ghosts, go straight to the NPC, and wail on him until he teleports. Don't let him get attacks off. That arrow that he's going to try to hit you with is going to do a ton of damage. Um, he'll also do, like, this star shower move. So there we go. We got him to teleport the first time. He's going to teleport probably to the end of the bridge. And then he's going to try to shoot with his arrows. Ignore everything else. So there's, like, his star rain stuff that he does. That's actually, if you kill him, that's a spell that you get. Um, that arrow takes a bit for him to get off, so if you can interrupt it, by all means, interrupt it. Now, even though I hit him, that that's still going to hit. That's still going to go off. Um, if you're too far away and he's going to shoot your, he's going to shoot his arrow at you, strafe to either side. Run, sprint to either side. I'm going to show you what I mean. So, and he'll probably miss you with it, like I just showed you there. So I just got my bleed. Okay, wow, that was actually really lucky to get the bleed to go right there. Um... But after, he's probably going to have more health for you than he does for me at this point when he, when he teleports to the top. And this is perhaps the most frustrating part of this encounter is that whenever you get close enough to hit him, he's going to teleport around this, like, rotunda up here. And um, he just teleports, 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 won't let you hit him. But he, by golly, he can hit you with his, with his bow. See, look at that. He teleports and then he shoots. Um... So you can't get close enough to hit him. So what you can do is you can go up this ladder, and he can snipe you on the ladder. 
But fortunately, it's not a one shot. I'm gonna wait for him to fire that just so I can get to the top. And he's generally, when you're, when you're up top here, he's generally not going to try to hit you. Um, there is a talisman up here that we're going to get. There are rats as well. And the rats are uh, are no pushover themselves. Um, if I can ignore them to the extent that I can ignore them, I'm going to. So I'm going to go up this ladder to the top. And then what we're going to do is, uh, well, we're going to get our talisman. And then we're going to snipe him from the rafters. Because that's really the only way I know to hit him up here. Because he's going to constantly... Oh, jeez. This is bad. Okay, that one fell down. That's wonderful. Um, You can either drop down and do a plunging attack. Or what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to use my bow and arrow and hit him. Now, the hardest part is once you're up here, you've kind of lost your bearings. And it's it's kind of hard to, to find where he's at. Because he doesn't glow like the other ones do. He's he's just kind of in normal robes. And I'll, I'll show you this talisman we just got. We got the uh, Cerulean Seed Talisman boosts FP restoration from the Flask of Cerulean Tears. I'll leave it to you to determine if that's worth coming here for or not. Um, okay, where is my dude? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if I can lock on to him from somewhere. Because he is hard to find when you're up here. And these rats don't make it any easier. There he is. So, um, I'm probably going to kill him in one or two hits. He will most... I, I got really lucky with that bleed. He will most likely have more HP when you encounter him. But, nonetheless, you can still kill him using the same method. He might still teleport and walk around and try to shoot you with arrows... But you can kill him from up here on the rafters. You do not have to go back down to get him. So I'm going to go on and shoot him. Oh, jeez. I'm going to go over here and do it. So um, actually probably the next one over is better. Um, I'm going to take care of him. So I'm going to get him with a uh, mighty shot. And yeah, that was that was one hit. Normally it's it's probably going to be 3 or 4 hits. I got again, I got lucky with that bleed. Um so yeah, 3 or 4 hits from up here with my with my bow with mighty shot will will typically take him out. Um and, and, and as I said, once I get up to the rafters cuz you know, you can't, you can't as I showed you, you can't hit him. He keeps teleporting all over the place when he gets up to this top part. So once I get up to the rafters and start shooting him, I don't ever go back down until he's dead. Um, and at this point, uh, let's see. I think there is an item. There we go. And I think this is actually a drop from an enemy. I don't, I don't think this is. No, I guess th th this is part of. Yeah, this, this, is, this is a guaranteed pickup. Golden Rune 4. Cool, cool. So uh, there's nothing else to do here for now. So I'm going to warp out as soon as I get the chance, as soon as I can pull my map back up. Where's my elevator? Or I don't need it. Okay. So I'm going to warp back here to the artist shack. As I've said, we've done all we can do here. And uh, what time of day is it? It's evening, so I'm going to warp it to uh, to morning. And do I have enough to level up from killing that guy? No. Nope. Not quite. Pass the time until morning. And there's actually a little bridge that you can cross to get from here to here. So we're going to pick up some stuff here. There's a little outpost here. And there's a site of grace right around here. And then... Um, Let's see, there's, I think, some crafting mats or something here. And then finally, we're going to hit up this place. This is a church that is important. So we're going to follow all of our beacons. So first of all, 
There's this guy who's kind of uh, by himself. I'm gonna kill him. He dropped something. Oops, I missed. So you get the Briars of Sin. And I think the Staff of the Guilty is, is a random drop. But the Briars of Sin is guaranteed when you kill him. Around here we have a enemy encampment. Sneak up on this first guy. Over here, we have Flame Cleanse Me. And then there should be a gesture somewhere. Maybe I already picked it up. Fire Monk Greaves. Take out this... Uh, Did I already get the gesture? Smoldering butterfly. Oh, well, it's not really important. It's a gesture. It, normally, I thought it was right near this, like, center uh, fire they got going on here. Uh, Let's see here. Yeah, it should be, like, right here in the middle of the camp. I may have already picked it up. I'm not sure. But anyway, the gesture that you get, and it's not at all important is uh fire fire spur me okay so i did get it okay so we're gonna head over here get our sight of grace Here is like a crafting mat, something along those lines. Here we go. Immunizing white cured meat. So not for crafting, but um, mind the bear. So we're going to ignore this fire guy. These things are super annoying. And up here on this hill, we're going to get to the Church of Vows. Okay, so here we are. So this is a um, fairly important spot. Um, so in here we get the gold sewing needle and gold tailor tools. Um, what those do is, you know how the other other tailoring tools, how they you can use them to, to alter your garments. Well, these, like the lady in Roundtable Hold who sells... Her, you can trade in your boss remembrance is from to get like the boss weapons. She also sells for, for people that you've killed, she'll sell their armor as well. So for some of those higher tiered armors, the golden needle is needed to alter those. So uh, also of import uh, here, you can um, absolve your sins at the statue. You're going to need an item called Celestial Dew to do that. Um, but let's say if you've aggroed it, accidentally aggroed an NPC, you've attacked them, you didn't know they were an NPC that was important, and you attacked them, and then they became hostile to you, what you can do here is you can come here and atone for your sins using that Celestial Do item, and then they'll be friendly to you again. So you can, you can undo certain wrongs of your past. And then, of course, we have the Turtle Pope. Let's talk to him. You are tarnished, aren't you? I welcome you to the Church of Vows. I am Muriel, steward of this sacred chamber. 
My apologies for the unseemly state of affairs. Do you know the origin of this place? How it came to be known as the Church of Vows? Well, that is a shame. But who can blame you? The shattering has caused us, all of us, to lose sight of something very dear. It is here, at the Church of Vows, that the great houses of the Erd Tree and the Moon were joined by the matrimonial bond between red-haired Radigan and Renala of the Full Moon. And so our church holds in view the monuments of both houses, the Erd Tree of the capital and the Academy of Rea Lucaria. Oh, was there something you needed? You are free to show yourself around. I would serve as your guide, only my legs aren't what they used to be. If you find anything of use, you are free to take it with you. Unless, perhaps, you are in search of instruction, in which case I will share all that I know. Okay, so this is the NPC that I recommend giving all of your spell books to. This guy is always going to be here. He does not move around like many of the other uh, NPCs that you can uh, give spell books to. Um, so you can guarantee that he will always be here, always ready to teach you whatever you want to learn and pay for. So I'm going to give him all of my scrolls, all of my prayer books. Oh, what have we here? Very well, let us both learn together. Heresy is not native to the world. It is but a contrivance. All things can be conjoined. Oh, what very well. Heresy His dialogue is uh, the same for all of these. We're going to give him all our prayer books. Oh, what very well. Heresy is all thing. Oh, very well. Heresy all thing. Oh, very well. Heresy all thing. Oh, very well. Heresy all things. Okay, I think that's it. So we can look at all the sorceries and incantations that we have um, access to. Some of these are pretty good. Um, a lot of folks like the Glint Blade, Glint Blade Phalanx spell. Um, Carrion Slicer is very solid, especially after the last update. I think they, uh, reduced the FP cost on a lot of these. So Carrion Slicer, very solid choice to have in your repertoire if you're a caster. Um, a lot of folks like the Carrion Greatsword as well. Um, so yeah, some good stuff here. And then, of, of course, for incantations. Um, Black Flame, uh, a lot of people like Black Flame. Uh, it's a pretty solid, uh, incantation, requires 20 faith. Lightning Spear... Uh, pretty good. So there, there's 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 some some good stuff here that we have access to already. Um, so this stuff we can uh, talk to him for some additional lore insight. You wish to know more of Lord Radigan. Lord Radigan was a great champion, possessed of flowing red locks. He came to these lands at the head of a great golden host. When he met Lady Renala in battle, he soon repented his territorial aggressions there and became husband to the Carian queen. However, when Godfrey, first Elden Lord, was hounded from the lands between, Radigan left Renala to return to the Erdtree capital, becoming Queen Marika's second husband and king consort, taking the title of second Elden Lord. The mystery endures to this day as to why Lord Radigan would cast Lady Renala aside, and moreover, why a mere champion would be chosen for the seat of Elden Lord. So lots of uh, lots of family drama. So we can now we can find out more about Renala. You wish to know more of Lady Renala? She is queen, head of the Carian royal family, and governor of the Academy of Rea Lucaria, the great and beautiful full moon. Sadly, her heart was broken when Lord Radigan left her. And then, when the Academy rebelled against the royals, she was locked away in the Grand Library. Okay, so a little bit more insight of what happened between the Academy of Rhea Lucaria and then the royals, the Carrion royals. So there's definitely some infighting going on there. Um, interesting stuff. They're not all on the same side. Lots of drama going on here in the Lands Between. So that is all we can do. The Church of Vows. We're going to head up this way. Um, there's some stuff we can pick up. 
Um, so I'm going to put some markers down here. This area is actually a little bit confusing. And uh, let's see, I've got, that's number four. Where's my other marker? Here we go. I'm going to take this one away. So my markers appear in numerical order as I would like them to. So this uh, next path we're going to go down is a little bit confusing. Um, there are, actually, I'm going to rest up at this. Uh, I know the grace is outside the church. Um, I'm going to rest up here to get my, my health all the way topped off. Uh, this, 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 this spot has some confusing pathways. Um, there are some enemies that are relatively challenging. Not too bad compared to what we've seen, but just, just brace yourself. Um, don't just, uh, roll through this next area that we're going to get to. As long as you, uh, know the approach, it's not too bad. There's some, some, some snipers. As long as you can, as long as you can see them before they see you and handle them accordingly, uh, it's not too bad. So these guys, I like to dismount, just do a dismount heavy and then follow it up and uh, you'll kill them in two hits. If you're using the same weapon that I'm using. And they do hit hard. So that noise you just heard, I don't know if you heard it, but um, there's someone who's up at the top of the cliff trying to shoot me with arrows and the arrows that they shoot do absurd amounts of damage as you just saw. Um, so he's perched up there on top of that rock. So man, I thought if I was running that I would I'd be, be safe. So I'm going to hide behind this rock right here. Top off my health. So what you're going to want to do is pull out your bow or any sort of ranged weapon that you have. Wait for them to fire and you can shoot him up there. Eventually he's going to come down here. And then you can fight him hand to hand, which is much easier. So I'm just basically spamming my own arrows until he decides to come down here. And if he doesn't decide to come down here, then he's going to die up there. Okay, there we go. Much easier, much easier to fight down here than they are when they're sniping you with their ridiculously powerful magic arrows. Um, that guy caught me by surprise my first playthrough, and I could not figure out what was going on. Um, I saw another one running around up there. He just dropped down. Oh. Unfortunately, those are not the magic arrows. The magic arrows are the ones that are problematic. Um... Okay, so as I said, you know, you see here on your map, like you have a path that looks like it should go this way, but that's not really how it works. This this path kind of winds around. You just have to have to deal with it. And you can hear a mausoleum in the background there. Okay, so there's a few more of these enemies over here. And there's there's another sniper right close to us. So stay on the move. If he starts hitting you, um, I'm going to relocate. I'm going to heal up anyway. I'll be getting to a side of grace before too long, so we'll be able to heal up. All right, so yeah, here's, here's the guy trying to shoot us. See them over there? So hide behind this pillar. Across this bridge. There's our side of grace over there. So jump attack, followed by an R1. Pretty solid stuff. I want to say, is there another one around here? Is there a sec? I think I think the second one that I normally see is that second one that dropped down when we were down on the the place below. Because normally I think that second one stays up here, but for me he dropped down. So there's only one more archer up here. So as I said, as long as you know the enemy placement, it's not so bad. But if you're caught off guard, um, much more likely to have a bad time. So from here, we can get to this other uh, item. I just want to make sure that I can get back. Yeah, it's off this cliff, I think. Here we go. Frenzy Flamestone, it's a consumable item. You throw it and uh, uses FP, I believe, and it will um, shoot out Frenzy. Okay, so up here, we're going to see our mausoleum. Right 
right there. And all of his glory. Um, I can't confirm this. But from what I've heard, you know how the other ones had a bell below them? This one does not have a bell. Um, from what I understand, I got this spiral horn sh shield, another one that causes bleed. Um, from what I understand, the ones that have the bells, you can duplicate like your demigod type boss remembrances from like the big old bosses that you kill. We only have one remembrance at this point, but there are some other bosses that you get remembrances from that are not like main bosses. So the ones that have bells, you can re you can replicate like your demigod bosses from, and the ones that don't have bells, you can replicate the other ones, the the the, the less significant bosses. Um, and there is a way to get that and then get back up here. I'm pretty sure, but I'm just gonna go for it. We'll figure it out. We got some arteria leaves, and yes, the rune bear. Yeah, if you go around here, you can get back up to where we just were. And eventually the room bear will stop chasing you. Yeah, we're good. We're back up to where the mausoleum is. The game still thinks I'm in an encounter, which is awesome. Okay, um... Let's see, there's another uh, side of grace. I think up here, or down here rather. And um, where I have that marked, number two, down here, there's some more stuff. I think I was too busy running away from the rune bear to even notice <laughs> like where I was. Here we go. Got these Michaela's, Michaela's, I think is their name. Lilies and the Stalwart Charm, which is pretty interesting uh, charm, talisman we can equip. So uh, this raises your robustness, which is the stat that governs your resistance to blood loss and frost. So if you're facing an enemy that is very high in bleed or frost or what have you, um, that will raise your resistance to those status effects. And over here is another side of grace. And this is actually a second mausoleum. These, these are two separate mausoleums. Um, there's two of them here. Just, just keep that in mind. And these are the normal ones where you attack their feet to, to, to get them to, to bend down. As opposed to the other one that I showed you in the last episode where you have to shoot them up at top. Um, so you see, we got, we got two of them. So you're not, you're not seeing double. Um, let's see, I'm going to to rest here to, to heal all the way up. And then what we're going to do now is head over to this minor Erd tree. And you'll notice this area up here, we can't, we cannot get to this section from where we're at. There's actually, in order to get up there, you have to, you have to go from, start from here kind of go up this cliff and come around that way. You cannot, this this kind of cliff, you cannot get up there from, from where we're at. So don't be deceived. Don't look for a secret path. Um, you'll spend a lot of time for, for nothing if you do. So this, uh, you see the Erdtree Avatar mini boss over here, same as the others, but this one has these guys surrounding him. So definitely take these guys out first because you don't want them inter interfering with the boss fight. I'm gonna take these guys out on horseback. I believe when you clear these guys out, you'll get some flask usages back if you have to use your flask. So I'm going to go on and top off my health and hope I don't get hit again. And I should get my flasks back. Yep. All right, so I'm going to charge in, do a dismounting heavy, and then fight this guy off my horse. 
And again, I generally spam my uh, Bloodhound's finesse on these guys. And for that attack, same same move set as the other ones. Um, I was blocked by that jar, so I couldn't run sideways. So I got hit by one of them. That's okay. And I was being greedy there. Almost got myself killed. So again, dodge the attacks, and I generally follow up these attacks with the Bloodhounds. So same. Run to the side. And as long as there's not something blocking your way, you should be able to dodge every single one of those projectiles. AoE. Okay. Not too bad. All right, so we get three cracked tiers. We get the magic, lightning, and holy. I believe these increase your defense to those respective stats. Yeah, boost magic. Oh, boost attacks, not defense. So boost attack, magic attack, lightning attack, holy attack. So not a bad haul. Got a lot of runes we're going to have to cash in here. So where we're headed next is actually... Um, I'm going to take this beacon off my map here. Where we're headed next is over here. Um, I don't think there's a spot you can drop off safely. I think we're going to have to warp back and manually traverse. Yeah, I think that's too far to drop from. Um, you can always check... By using a rainbow stone. I'm going to throw a rainbow stone over here. And if it breaks, if it shatters at the bottom, it's too high. Oh, we can survive that fall. Nice. I'm glad I checked that because my assumption was, and what I normally do is I, I take the long way around. Um, and it is a bit of a trek. So you basically have to go all the way back. You know, well, you could, you could warp right here, but you remember this is like the windy path that has the snipers, and you got to get down here and then go all the way up this way. So we saved ourselves some time by doing it this way. And there's no, there's no, not that I know of, there's no items or anything of, of, uh, any sort of importance on the way over here. So we're not missing anything by by doing that little shortcut. Let's see if I can get this dragonfly. The dragonfly heads are pretty good crafting. Yep, there we go. Sweet. And so we're on our way to a catacombs. We see this guy in front. I would suggest running right past him. Going inside the catacombs. Get your sight of grace. Because if he kills you, it's a trek to get back here. You see, he kind of teleports. He does have punishable windows, so when he does his like stab, you can you can punish it with a bloodhound's finesse. There's really not any massive reward for killing this guy. And I think he even maybe respawns. I'm not quite sure. All right, come on. Give me something, buddy. Oh, don't hit me. So right after his attack, that's kind of your window. To get something going. He tried to guard counter the first, the first attack in my Bloodhound's finesse, but uh, left himself open for the follow through, which was good for us. And if we had died, we would spawn literally right here, so not a big deal. Definitely gonna level up. Um, as I said, I'm gonna go to 25 endurance at this point. And then I'm going to crank a bunch of levels into Vigor. 
get that up pretty pretty good. That HP boost is gonna help, especially with the with the areas coming up after the Ernia. So this is a catacombs that has the skeletons. Um, and also the boss is very susceptible to holy damage. So we're gonna go katana in here. And again, it's not just the katana itself. I wanna point out, in case you haven't seen the earlier catacombs episodes where I've used this, um, it is not the katana itself. It is the fact that I have the katana mixed with the um, sacred blade ash of war. And so what you can do is the uh, this ash of war enchants the blade with holy. And the holy will kill the skeletons in just about one hit. And the skeletons don't revive. So as an example, look at that. And the skeleton doesn't revive. So you don't have to hit it again to keep it from coming back up. And and then after you do that kind of projectile that I just did, your, your blade is going to be enchanted with holy for, for a period of time. After that. Maybe like 15 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, something like that. Not Not too long. Now, some of the skeletons in here, you see how there's like an aura coming off of that skeleton? That means that that skeleton doesn't die. Uh, that, that the reason it doesn't die is because there's actually an enchanter. So to get these skeletons to die, you have to kill the enchanter first. So once you kill the enchanter, you see how those skeletons died immediately. So those skeletons are unique in that they can't be killed normally. So I have a stone sword key door here. I'm going to go ahead and use my stone sword key. And there's a skeleton that's going to pop up in here. Or two. Oh, he interrupted my projectile, but I'm going to kill him in one hit. Oh, no, I'm not going to kill him in one hit. Bad gummit. Oh, well. It happens. Hmm. Interrupting my flow. So I'm going to show you what happens when you don't enchant your blade. Takes a lot of hits. And then you see the white wispy stuff. You got to hit it one more time. Otherwise, they'll, they'll revive indefinitely. All right. Now that I've thoroughly embarrassed myself, we're going to try this again. I right, get these down. Come back here. Actually, I don't even need to do this. I already got... Well, no, I didn't get the item. And I got to get my runes back, too. All right. So, I'm going to give myself some room and enchant my blade this time. You know, see, compare this to how many hits we had to do before. Unenchanted. And now, see, he does not revive. He's gone. Um, get the Rosas Axe. And in this room, we're going to have more in, of the enchanted skeletons that um, will never die unless you kill the enchanter. The, the enchanter is actually hidden. If you ride this axe blade up, this is where the enchanter is. And there's another one right here that is uh, going to take the hit. Um, so now these ones down here are dead. Spellproof dried liver. So do not stand under when, the, when these guillotines drop generally a bad idea. And one skeleton by itself, not so much a threat, but when you have multiple, that's where you're going to want to think about enchanting your weapon. Um, so we're going to drop down here and we're going to put the uh, bloodhounds back on. So whenever you see little crabs... That's generally a sign that you're about to see Big Crab. So over here, some goodies. Got a Grave Glove Work 3. And a Rune Arc. And a Angry Crab. Oops, I meant to be two-handing there. I did the wrong ability. Okay. There's actually a second one in here, too.
don't need to fight these things. You can actually just get the rune arc and, and hightail it out of here because there's nothing important down here. So the solution to this catacombs is actually you have to ride that second axe blade up to the top. And that's where your switch is. And there's also something secret to this dungeon. There's a secret boss in this dungeon. I'm going to show you guys that as well. Now, the secret boss is much tougher than the main boss. So we're going to kill the main boss first, and then we're going to come back and get the secret boss. We got some Glaive Glove, Glove, Glove Wart 4. So we can use that to upgrade our uh, spirit summons even higher than they were before. So these are enchanted skeletons. Um, you just really got to run past them and get this guy, and then and then those ones back there are going to die. This one here, more skeletons. I know I don't have my, my enchanted katana out, but that's okay. Oh, that other one's going to get back up. I need to get back to him. I, I, I thought I could kill the other one in enough time. But I, I wasn't able to make it back. So I'm going to make sure I get this guy before I... I could have had my katana equipped, but I forgot to put it back on. And I wasn't about to switch mid-fight. So, as for the secret, this wall is illusory. And there's a boss back here. We're going to, as I said, I'm going to do the main boss first. And then we're going to take on the, uh, the hidden boss. So if you drop down here, it's going to take you to the other side of this fence that we were blocked by before. And we have a switch here to open the main boss door. I should have put my katana back on. It's all good. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. So this takes us back to where we fought the crabs. So if you open up this gate, I don't need to fight that skeleton. Just run straight for the straight for the ladder, and then you can go back to the beginning of the level and uh, where the boss door is. Make sure again, do not get careless. Do not stand under the guillotines while they drop. And I'm going to run back and rest up, get my healing back, get my magic back, my FP, I should say. And then we're going to fight the boss. So the boss is another one of those dark shade things. We fought another one in a different catacombs. And it is highly, highly, highly susceptible to the to the holy damage from the uh, Ash of War that I have on the katana right now. So we're going to keep the katana equipped for this boss fight. And um, there's the, the the boss summons a few uh, fellow skeletons with him. So definitely call in your um, your spirit summon. Take the aggro off of you. I'm going to do that right when I get in here. And then I need to use my cerulean flask so I can enchant my blade. Uh, he moved out of the way. So that green attack that he does, it's not poison. It is his grab attack. If he does it on you, he's going to run up to you and do a very powerful attack on you. And um, he does have bleed damage on his weapon, so be careful. Yeah, that, that that's the green attack, dang it, that I was talking about. And it's a grab attack. Make sure you mash every button on the controller all at once to uh, lessen the duration of the grab attack. So he's got like one hit left. I'm going to do my uh, enchant. There we go. Well, one of my wolves got him. So, but you saw how much when, when my weapon was enchanted, how much damage I was doing to that thing. And having the wolves take the pressure off, I think there were three or four additional skeletons in the fight at the same time. Pretty ridiculous. Um, but they do their job and they do their job well. So in here, don't forget this treasure chest before you warp out because inside of this treasure chest, we have another death route. So again, the death routes are where you can take back to Garank all the way over here in the Bestial Sanctum. And I think there's a total of nine in the game. And so he trades you uh, some pretty decent loot 
for returning those to him. If you remember when we walked inside the catacombs, we got that message, the beast eye quivers. We got the beast eye from Garank, and basically it, it indicates whenever there's a death route nearby. So we can return to the entrance here, but don't forget there is one more boss in here, and this boss is tough. Um, very tricky. It's a black knife assassin. Um, there's actually an NPC quest line later on in the game that's going to allude to a uh, piece of loot that we get from killing this boss. And we're going to go on and kill him now while we're here. Um, if, you, if, if you have too hard of a time, as I always say, you can always come back later. We have this side of grace. Um, you can, you know, get stronger and come back later if you find that he's too tough for you. Bloodhound Fang going to go with that for this boss because this boss I, it, is not weak to the, um, as far as I know, it's not weak to the holy damage. So I'm going to go straight up, Bloodhound, bang on him. So the way that you get to him, you remember, you got to ride this blade up. I'm just kind of running around trying to dodge a skeleton. One of them got on the platform with me. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. That's a new one. Golly. I looked back at the enchanter. I was like, should I kill him? I was like, nah, I can get away with it. And then, and then that happened. Golly. So I got to go back and get my runes. Is this episode going to turn into a disaster at the very end? Time will tell. We're an hour in now. Let's hope that it does not turn into a disaster. We're going to see. All right. So unfortunately, that one only takes care of the uh, skeletons from behind us. It does not take care of the archers. But the archers don't move. The one that killed me was one of the ones from, from back in the other area that got, got on the blade, that got on the guillotine blade with me. All right, so these guys are going to run past because the enchanter is all the way in the back of the room. And this boss is very quick, very shifty. I'm going to do my best to show you his moves. There's one move in particular that I like to punish, and you cannot summon for this fight. Sad, sad as it is, um, he moves around very quickly. Um, and you can see his attacks hit very hard. Um, so that jump attack, you can punish. You see his dagger gets kind of stuck in the ground after that, but I was too far away to... That's the attack that I like to punish. His, the one where he drags his his dagger along the floor. Um, I did a poor job of, of demonstrating it there. Oh, this is a projectile bleed attack. And you see that my HP is debuffed now. Um, it's hard to keep your HP up. And especially while I'm, I'm trying to talk here. So while the one where he drags his... That jump attack, as I said, you can punish if you're quick enough. Um, the one where he drags his dagger on the floor, you want to dodge that attack, ugh, because that reduces your that attack reduces your max HP. Um, the one where he drags his dagger on the ground, he's not cooperating. There it is. So stay, just back away from that, and you should be able to do a jump attack on him. That's his grab attack. Definitely want to stay away from his grab attack. Um, so jump attack, also. He's, his dagger gets stuck in the ground. You can do a jump attack on that. This one, you can do a jump attack punish. Um, it was a little too slow for that one. But oftentimes on the, the one where he drags it on the ground, if I'm, if I'm quick enough, I can get a jump attack and then a couple extra hits uh, while he's on the ground. I'm going to top off health here. So jump attack. If you're quick enough, his dagger's stuck. You can do a jump attack. And it's, it really is, I made, I made that probably look a little bit easier than it is. That is a very difficult fight. It is a matter of learning his moves and, and learning what you can punish. So again, you can punish the attack where he drag, like I, I'm dodging the rest of the time. Um, you can punish the attack where he drags his dagger on the floor. You can punish the attack where he jumps in the air. And, and, and when his dagger gets stuck in the ground, those are your two main ones you're going to want to punish. Anything else, you're pretty much going to be wanting to dodge away from all of his attacks. Like, do doing a lot of dodging back. I'm dodging away from him because he he closes the gap so quickly. And so that's that's how I go about that fight. 
Um, those projectiles that were reducing my max HP, you can actually just dodge through them. I was just kind of, I was distracted by talking and wasn't paying close enough attention. But when he winds up his dagger and he does that projectile attack, you can just dodge straight through that projectile and it's not going to hit you. So for our trouble, we get the Assassin Cerulean Dagger and we get the Black Knife Print. So the Assassin Cerulean Dagger is a, um, it's the opposite of this one. We have the Crimson Dagger equipped, which restores HP from critical attacks. This one restores FP from critical attacks. So um, we have both of them now. We also got the Black Knife Print, which is a key item. Um, Mark of the Knight of the Black Knives Ritual. Um, so what this is, is this is going to be a requirement for an NPC quest line later on down the road. Eventually in this quest line, you're going to get a hint to where this is located, but we already have it now, so we don't need that hint anymore. We're going to warp on out of here. I need to level up. But yes, that boss is tough. That boss took me a while to get on my first playthrough. But again, I had never seen his moves before. Um, so now that you've at least seen his moves and seen what attacks you can punish, um, that's going to help you out pretty significantly. All right, let's level up here. Um, as I said, I'm going to be funneling levels into uh, to HP for a good while now. All right, and... Uh, Let's see, we'll just stop it right here. I don't need to warp back to round table. Hold on. I don't have anything else I got to do back there. So I'm going to go on and cut this one here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Hope it's been entertaining, informative, all that good stuff. Hope you're enjoying your own playthrough of Elden Ring as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Having a blast making these walkthroughs. I'll catch you all next time.